Hello, everyone, and welcome to your linear algebra review on non-standard vector operations. My name is Jason, and I work for the ASU Tutoring Centers. As I mentioned in the last video, we're very comfortable and very used to working with sort of this standard addition, which is also called Euclidean addition, of vectors, which I'll denote by plus, and scalar multiplication, which I'll denote by this, this multiplication sign, this dot. We're very comfortable working with these, right? We can, we can usually take a vector v1 and add a vector v2 to it, or we can take a scalar alpha and multiply it by a vector v1. These operations we're comfortable with and we know how to work with them. But they're not the only operations that can work on your vector space. So first of all, what's a vector space? Well, a, a vector space, for, for lack of a better word, it's sort of a, a collection of vectors. Of vectors. It's a collection of vectors with some kind of addition and some kind of scalar multiplication. And I'm going to use these, these stranger symbols, right? These, a plus sign with a circle around it and a multiplication sign with a circle around it to show that it's not necessarily the sort of standard addition and standard multiplication. You can have different ones, right? This quote unquote plus and this quote unquote times, um, they can be different than the standard uh, ones that we're used to. For instance, look at this, this example down below here. I'm defining plus in this sense to not just be adding directly across x1 plus y1, x2 plus y2, but instead to be going x1 plus y1 plus 1 and x2 plus y2 plus 1. So it's a different form of addition than the one we're used to. Okay, This is how I'm defining my addition. So vector spaces, they're a collection of vectors that have these two properties, this additive and scalar multiplicative operation. And beyond that, there's like these 10 rules that your vector space has to follow. So in order to be a vector space, you have to be a collection of vectors with these two operations that follow these sort of 10 rules. And in future videos, we might talk about those 10 rules. There's a lot of them. Um, a couple of the rules for a vector space is, go ahead and erase. A couple of the rules for a vector space. The first one is that you need to have what is called an additive, an additive identity. So you need to have a special vector, a very special vector often denoted by the zero vector, such that when I add it to some vector using whatever my additive property is, I get my original vector back. Right, you need to have some sort of zero vector and I'll actually put a, a, a subscripted V for the vector space I'm working with. Okay, so if I'm in a, in a vector space V, um, this is what I use to notate the quote unquote zero vector in that vector space. Okay. It's a zero vector with a little V under it. So this zero vector, it could just be zero, 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 depending on which, whichever one you're in, but it might not be right. If we're using standard addition, it's the zero vector, but if we're using non-standard addition, it could be some other kind of vector. And we'll, we'll, we'll look at that in the future. So you need to have an additive identity. Another thing you need is you need to have an additive inverse. So that is to say, um, for any vector that you have, uh, let's say V, there exists some other vector, usually denoted negative V, such that when you add them together, you get the zero vector out of it. So again, this zero vector might not be zero, zero, zero. It could be different depending on what your vector space is and what your, your additive operation is. But these are two important properties in defining a vector space. You need to have an additive identity and you need to have an additive inverse, okay? So we're going to be finding the additive identity and additive inverse um, for all of these vectors, okay? All right, so let's, let's start looking. Looking at our first case, our vector space is R3, okay, three-dimensional Euclidean space with the operations of standard addition and scalar multiplication. Now, something to keep in mind 
Um, just because you define an addition and you define a scalar multiplication, those uh, might be defined in such a way that you don't actually get a vector space using them. You may not get a vector space, at which point we would just call it a vector set. A vector set. A vector set you can think of as, as a collection of vectors. Collection of vectors with two operations, but they don't satisfy all 10 of those vector space axioms I was talking about earlier, all those rules that you need to be a vector space. Okay, so if you, if, you have, if you are a collection of vectors that have a plus and a times operation, but you don't satisfy all of the properties, um, we would just call you a vector set instead of a vector space. Um, so just keep that in mind, right? These examples we're doing right here might not actually be vector spaces. Uh, the first one is a vector space. It's, it's three-dimensional Euclidean space. So they're, they're vectors that have three dimensions to them, like 3, 17, negative pi. So they are three dimensional and all of the elements come from the real numbers, right? Three, 17 and negative pi are all real numbers. That's what R3 is. And the addition we're using is the standard addition. So you just add component wise and standard scalar multiplication. So you just multiply component wise. Okay, so in this case, first we're going to try to find our additive identity. So if I were to take any arbitrary vector in R3, x1, x2, x3, I'm trying to find a vector y1, y2, y3, such that when I add it to my original one, I get x1, x2, and x3 back out of it. So I'm trying to find this vector, such that when I add it to my, my x vector, I get the x vector back. And how I'm gonna find this is I'm going to use what the definition of the standard addition is, right? The standard addition tells us that if I do x1 plus x2, sorry, x1, x2, x3 plus y1, y2, y3, I should get x1 plus y1, x2 plus y2, and x3 plus y3 out of it. Right, I just add component wise. So I'm trying to say I'm setting this equal to y1, y2, y3, sorry, x1, x2, x3, my apologies. I'm setting this equal to x1, x2, and x3. And I'm trying to solve for what the y1, y2, and y3s are. I'm trying to solve for what this is. Well, when I have two vectors equal to each other, that just means the components are equal, right? So x1 plus y1 equals x1, x2 plus y2 equals x2, and x3 plus y3 equals x3. So then solving this, if I subtract x1 over, I get y1 equals zero. If I subtract x2 over, I get y2 equals zero. And if I subtract x3 over, I get y3 equals zero. So this vector I was trying to find is actually the zero vector. So, so in this case, for part A, my additive identity which I will call zero sub V is really just the zero vector. And again, that, that should make sense. That's, that's sort of what we've been using as our additive identity element um, with the standard addition. So our additive identity should be the zero vector. Now, if we're trying to find um, the additive inverse for any vector, so now what I'm doing is I'm taking any arbitrary vector I have, x1, x2, x3, and I'm trying to find a vector y1, y2, y3, such that when I add them together, I get my additive identity out of it. I get my additive identity, which in this case is 0, 0, 0. So I'm trying to find this vector in terms of x1, x2, and x3. Okay, so again, I, I do my, my normal vector addition, right? x1 plus y1, x2 plus y2, and x3 plus y3. So this guy over here, this vector, is equal to my zero vector. So what do I do? Again, I just set them equal component wise. So I have x1 plus y1 equals zero, x2 plus y2 equals zero, and x3 plus y3 equals zero. If I solve for y, my y's, 
I get y1 is negative x1, y2 is negative x2, and y3 is negative x3. Which again, hopefully this should make sense. This is sort of what the inverse has been the whole time. Right, if I have a vector four, five, six, its additive inverse using the standard addition would be negative four, negative five, negative six. When I add them together, I get the zero vector out of it. Okay. So for part A, consolidating all of this stuff that we've found out, let me just write it down here. Um, for part A, our additive identity Um, the zero vector is zero, zero, zero. And our additive inverse, that's not how you spell that. Additive, again, I'm a, I'm a math major, okay? I'm not an English major. Yeah, our additive inverse, so given a vector x1, x2, and x3, its inverse is just negative x1, negative x2, negative x3. So there you go. We have found the additive identity for a vector, and we have found the additive inverse for any arbitrary vector. So that's part A done. Now part B is where it gets wacky, because this is non-standard addition. So let's go through the process, right? First, we're going to try to find our additive identity. So again, if we take a vector, x1, x2, we're trying to find a vector y1, y2, such that when we add them together, we get, um, we get my original vector x1, x2 out of it, right? That's the goal. But in this case, I'm not using the standard addition. I'm using this new addition, this special addition, which is defined differently. And how is this addition defined? Well, if I'm taking x1, x2 plus y1, y2, I end up getting x1 plus y1 plus 1 and x2 plus y2 plus 1. This is how the addition is defined for this vector set. Okay, so again, I'm trying to find this y1, y2, such that when I add it to x1, x2, I get x1, x2 back out of it, right? That's sort of what the identity um, is. That's sort of what the quote unquote zero vector is. It doesn't change my vector when I add it. So these two things are equal, this vector over here and this vector over here. So because they're equal, I set them equal component-wise. So I have x1 plus y1 plus 1 equals x1, and x2 plus y2 plus 1 equals x2. Solving for y1 and y2, up top, I get the x1s cancel, and I subtract the 1 over. So I get y1 is negative 1. Down below, the x2s cancel, and I subtract the 1 over, and I get y2 is also negative 1. So this is telling me that for part B, for part B, my additive inverse, sorry, my additive identity, the zero vector in this case, is really negative one, negative one. It's not zero, zero, like what we're used to. Okay, so that's my additive identity. So now I'm trying to find my additive inverse. So let me erase all this. So now what I'm looking for is, given any arbitrary vector, x1, x2, I'm trying to find some other vector, y1, y2, such that when I add them together, I get the zero vector out of it, okay? which in this case is negative 1, negative 1. This is what I'm trying to find now. I'm trying to find a vector, y1, y2, that acts as the inverse, so that when I add them together, I get the zero vector out of it. But again, how is my addition defined? x1, x2 plus y1, y2 is defined in this way. It's x1 plus y1 plus 1, x2 plus y2 plus 1. And now we're, we're here again. I have this vector, and it's equal to this vector. So setting them equal to each other component-wise, I get uh, x1 plus y1 plus 1 equals negative 1. x2 plus y2 plus 1 equals negative 1. Uh, solving both of these for y1 and y2, I get y1 equals negative x1 minus 2, right, because I have to subtract this one over there. 
and I get y2 is negative x2 minus 2. So this is what my additive inverse is. So uh, consolidating all this information together, we get, um, again, our, our additive identity. Identity. Uh, the zero vector in this case, our additive identity, is negative 1, negative 1. And our additive inverse in this case, given any vector x, given any vector x1, x2, our inverse is negative x1 minus 2, negative x2 minus 2. You guys. So there you go. There's your additive identity and the additive inverse for any arbitrary vector, x1, x2. So note that in order to calculate the additive inverse, we needed to first calculate the additive identity. So if they ever ask you to find the additive inverse, you need to first find the additive identity. Perfect. Well, thank you for watching. As I mentioned at the beginning, I work for the ASU Tutoring Centers. Um, if you want more information about the free resources we offer on all four major ASU campuses and online, please check out tutoring.asu.edu. Um, if you want more videos like this that go over specific concepts from your course, or if you want to see what upcoming review sessions we have for the exams in your course, go ahead and check out this link below. Thank you again for watching and have a splendid day.